Welcome to Tunisia's Lux Beauty Tips and Potpourri, the channel where we get it all in. You can also learn more about the I Am Melanin Magic brand. Thank you for stopping by. Greetings. Welcome to Tunisia's Lux Beauty Tips and Potpourri. Hello, 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 beautiful butterflies and perfect people. Thank you for returning to the channel. I am Tunisia Ali, and I am here today to talk to you about Sister Locks concerns and recommendations regarding children. Now, I know that if I was where I was, if I, if today I knew back then, I can't get this right. I could edit this out, but I'm not. Let's see, let's see, what am I trying to say? If back then I knew what I knew today and I had my locks when I was raising Naima and Ronnie, then I would have wanted them to have locks too as young people because I knew where I was when I made the choice to get them. And now, all these years later, I know how they have enriched my life and my ideal as it relates to our natural beauty and my fully embracing the diaspora of diversity when it comes to black beauty, the melanated beings. Not that we're the only ones, but we, we have the greatest amount of diversity. Um, and we produce colors and ranges of all shades and beauty. God is great. So, okay, when we talk about our appreciation for natural hairstyles, naturally, we want to be able to pass that on to our children because it gives them a sense, a healthy concept. And shout out to the sister who asked me to do this video. I wish I could remember her name. If y'all give me a second, I want to go on my phone. And I'm hoping that I can just pull her up by doing a search. And maybe if I'm lucky, ah, oh, she asked me to do this video and I just cannot remember her name. What a shame. Oh, daughters let me type in daughters because i believe she has two daughters who have sister locks yes i found it her name is oh no i'm sorry oh no or oh no me imore or imore i'm sorry if i butchered your name sister i did the best i could but she said i'm looking for a way to ask you questions about my daughter's locks is there a text or is text a good form or is there an email I can write to? You guys know I don't like to respond personally on my text thread to messages about the locks because I really don't like to give one-on-one -on -one advice. I'm not a loctician consultant. I'm not a specialist. I'm someone that cares about other people. I'm someone that takes my life and my hair into my own hands. I'm someone that likes to be self-reliant and I'm someone that's kind of a non-conformist. So I'm always searching for better ways to do things. And as a result, I tend to be a truth seeker in my life. And so what that, how that translates is that I like to solve problems. So I have an inquisitive mind. So that's what I want to bring to you on the channel. My experiences, not the ones that I want you to necessarily embrace, but my particular experiences. Either way, if this looks like a video that you want to watch as we delve into why sister locks can be a wonderful thing for your children, but why there are certain things you need to consider when you're when you're when you're contemplating uh, installing sister locks in the heads of your children, or if your children already have sister locks, stick around and watch this video. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to like and to subscribe to the channel if you already haven't. And if you haven't purchased my book, Manifesting Your Masterpiece, please make sure you do so. on what things I would want to know and what I feel would be important if I were still in the child rearing stages and I had locks or I wanted my children to have them. I came up with a list of 13 things. Y'all know I can get long-winded. I'm going to do my best to kind of condense this. My last several videos have been way too long. But I love y'all. I want to give y'all quality and I like to talk to you all on the channel and I like to be thorough 
in my expression of things. And I know that if you have something else to do, you can always click away, but some of you do actually make it through to the end and by the way if you do let me know in the comments you made it to the end and if you want to stick around to the very very end i'll pull an oracle card for you okay all right um so first and foremost you want to do the pre-work there is pre-work that i feel you should do that involves indoctrination in a positive way of course um, indoctrinating your children and doing the level of pre-work to lay the foundation for a healthy install and a healthy sense of self-concept when it comes to getting the sister locks. You want them to embrace the idea of getting them and you want to be able to lay a foundation for why it's such a beautiful thing and why it helps them to manifest the glory of who they are and it helps them to really um, embrace and um, hold as an ideal the beauty of their kinky hair. And so that takes some, some, some what do you call it? Some tactfulness because it, that doesn't happen in a day. It comes down to the things that you say when you're walking around at the mall and you see a sister that has a natural hairstyle commenting on that to your daughter and saying, oh my gosh, that is so beautiful. Look how curly it is. Look at that. And oh, what about that lady over there? And you just begin to plant the seeds to help them to begin to feel good about who they are acknowledging the the different um hairstyles natural hairstyles that you may see uh whether it's traditional locks locks uh, afros whatever it may be twists anything that helps them to embrace the diversity that is them all right because you can move them from that to sister locks you can even get magazines that showcase braids and things like that you can talk about individuals but talk about how much better it is to have it be your real hair okay those sorts of things so you want to plant the seeds early number two be a messenger of positive self-image yourself and individuality i'm going to add that why because our hair is our signature trademark in a lot of respects, depending upon what hair means to you and what it means within the cultural paradigm that you're familiar with. Hair is the way that we express ourselves. And so our hair should reflect um, our unique individuality and our little footprint or our little fingerprint. And so you also have an, a, a healthy self image about your identity in general, regardless of who you are, what you look like, your skin complexion, um, the quality of hair you have, not the quality, it's all wonderful, the type, if it's 4C, 3C, 4B, whatever, whatever it is, you want to be a messenger of that positive self-image yourself by the way you carry yourself. And the first one you're looking out at everyone else and you're pointing things out and you're planting seeds and this way you are talking about how beautiful you are and what do you think about mommy's locks don't they look beautiful you know you're, you're you're speaking about other things that have to do with your child recognizing that you accept yourself for who you are you don't spend your days criticizing yourself about your weight in front of your children i used to do that and i gave my girls a complex by the way something I regret. I believe that's why they're so, they were so body conscious, um, over the years, um, because they listened to the things that I said about myself. Not that I put them down or criticized them, but they looked at me being constantly dissatisfied with the way that I looked. Thank goodness I healed myself of that drama. And the, the locks were a, a, a great part of that journey, but you want them to be able to perceive, uh, subtly and sometimes very explicitly how you feel about yourself, not just your hair, but everything else. Because if they recognize that you take pride in who you are exactly the way you are, then when you talk about your locks or when they see you get your locks installed, they will have faith in your decision. Number three, Help them to learn to deal with negative stereotypes and images that fortify their self-concept. Ah, negative stereotypes and images that I'm going to say defortify or images that uh, weaken their sense of self-concept. 
you're going to have to introduce them to stereotypes. You're going to have to talk about the ways in which um, certain people may look at their hair and have certain commentary. You're going to have to role play. You're going to have to give them a sense of how to respond in these situations because inevitably they will have these situations. It doesn't matter if your children have had their locks for three to four years and they've yet to reach adulthood and they're still living in your home. They're going to interface with quite the level of ignorance. And so it's important to prepare them going in for some of those situations by recreating those potentials and having these kinds of conversations and helping them to understand where these stereotypes came from, how these stereotypes might actually prevent themselves, some of the ignorant statements that people will make, and that sometimes these state statements will even come from people that look just like them. Number four, explain the importance of embracing your essence. That goes back to number two about the creativity. Help them to recognize that who they are is beautiful exactly the way they are. Try to stay away from putting your kids in a box, living vicariously through them, being very judgmental and wanting them to conform to all of your expectations. Folks, they come here as a soul with their own soul plan. They come into this world with enough of our karmic debris and energetic baggage. All right, so saddling them with more and more of your expectations rather than helping them come to and arrive at conclusions about who they are and what they really want to be in the world and spending your time as a parent supporting their gifts instead of highlighting their inadequacies and their deficiencies and trying to line them up with what you want from them, it's not worth it. So help to bring out what is within them. Help to augment their essence by, by um, positive reinforcement, by making space and holding space for them to express who they are, how they want to look, what they want to do, and so forth and so on. Number five, wait between the ages of six and eight. I found this one on the internet. Why? Because their heads are still forming. Their heads are still forming. And as their heads form and they get larger, their scalps will get larger. And you may have to go in and add more locks or shift locks or the grid will, will have to be modified. So wait until that age at least. Okay. And plus... It's not the easiest thing to put in children's hair, guys. It's not easy to sit for that length of time. And children squirm and so forth. So I always say, if a child can't sit for longer than an hour and it becomes very uncomfortable, you need to wait until that child is a little more mature or either you need to find the type of loctician who can install in phases. Maybe the first... Maybe it's going to take 25 hours and you do five hours over a six month period. Who knows? But find out what works for your particular child based on his or, or her, you know, frequency. Number six, prepare them for the maintenance and the reties. This is going to be tricky, but you have to find a creative way of explaining what the maintenance, what maintenance is required uh, in addition to the reties, the different things that they can learn to do, whether it's braiding and banding or mommy has to wash your hair like this first. And look what mommy does when she braids and bands her hair and those sorts of things. But you have to prepare them for the reties. And one of the great greatest ways to get them psyched up about the retie is to talk about how they won't have to get their hair done every day, that they can get their hair done like every two months. Mommy won't have to comb it. Nobody will be pulling on it. It won't be hurt. You know, most children are tender headed. So kind of try to introduce it that way, but do make sure that you actually talk with them about the reties so that they have some expectation of what they're in for. Next, um, seven, set the expectations early for hair care so that they understand the level of responsibility. Now, while you are telling them that they only have to get their hair done every eight weeks, what we're talking about is helping to set the expectations of the fact that and you do this incrementally over time. You don't overwhelm them. You tell them simple things, okay? Like, you know, you, you can start, depending upon how old they are, don't let people pull on your hair. You know, don't, you know, do like this with your hair. Don't pull it too tight. Sleep with your satin cap on. You introduce in stages what is developmentally appropriate so that they can begin to understand what is required in maintaining their hair. If you are the parent who wants them to use oil, then maybe you have them to spray it once a, a week or something like that. If you are a parent who doesn't want them wearing tight barrettes, then you have to have that conversation with them. It depends, but any and everything can be a part of the maintenance down to 
what they need to do after they shampoo their hair, what they need to do before they go to bed in the evening, those sorts of things. When it's winter time, you know, being careful of not wearing certain sweaters where the lint can actually get in the locks, all of those sorts of things. Number eight, this is a biggie here. And, um, yeah, I think I got a picture. Actually, I haven't done the thumbnail, but I'm going to do the thumbnail. There's something on the thumbnail I wanted to put. You have these beautiful children who have these beautiful sister locks, and they are in these tightly braided hairstyles. Um, based on what I know now, and based on the fact that we know that children are starting out so much earlier, I know we have these temptations to be ultra creative, and we want to try to do some of the same things that we did that we would do if our children didn't have sister locks. You have to be super careful about taking these locks and then having these braided updos and all of this other stuff. It's not that you can't do it, um, but you need to measure the frequency at which you do it, and you need to decide really how mandatory is it that you put these locks in additional styles in your children's hair and then also you need to really you know have a conversation with the person who's going to be putting the cornrows in or, or doing the updos and you need to make sure that, that that they understand that there's no reason that that stuff be tight on the scalp that the, the tighter on the scalp it is the more dissatisfied you're going to be children don't require all that they don't even like those tight hairstyles on their hair a lot of times because it's very uncomfortable you want to make sure you check in with your children to make sure that their heads are not sore. Why? Because this causes trauma. And why? Because they're starting so young, ladies. It's really imperative that you give them the greatest advantage that you can and that just because they may be more resilient, that you don't cause them to rack up hair trauma year after year after year because not only do they have the locks and are they undergoing the retightenings, but you're also excessively styling them, putting additional braids in them, cornrows and so forth and so on. That's almost a no-no. And if you do it, it needs to be something that you do maybe one out of 10 times, whether it's a year, maybe they do it one month, you know, out of the year or two months out of the year but you need to really be careful that's something i guard against next number nine have a serious long-term plan for how you're going to care for your locks as they get longer over the course of time children's hair um it's going to be beautiful it's going to be abundant more than likely it's going to be very full you're giving them a great start you're helping them to embrace the abundance of black hair uh, but because of that, they run the risk over time, just like we do, of racking up so many retightenings, so many negligent retightenings or careless retightenings, where they can face more trauma than we can over time. And the last thing you want is for them to be in their 20s or 20, 20s or 30s if they decide to keep their locks and start dealing with balding and thinning or even earlier. Make sure that you not only get the right loctician, but make sure that you are doing things to keep them healthy internally as well as externally. Make sure they're getting their vitamins in. Make sure they get the vitamins in that are good for their long-term hair, skin, and a hair health or nail, skin, and hair health. The folic acid. Make sure they're getting adequate zinc. Make sure they're getting their sulfur. Make sure that you're um, fortifying them with... Um, Oh my gosh, I said the folic acid, the B12, and anything else that they might be deficient in and they're not getting from their food, the omegas. Make sure that the retightenings don't become something that actually is the cause of early uh, follicle death. Be sure that as a part of your long-term plan, you're not only making sure that they eat right and that they drink enough water, but that you're also putting something in their hair. Okay, and I'm going to speak to you briefly about the I Am Melanin Magic hair oil because it can be a great way to fortify their hair over time and to help them bounce back from the ills that are associated with uh, improper, inappropriate, and careless retightening and just the overall length of the hair. This is not to be overused with young children. If your children don't have issues with their hair drying out, I would suggest you use this primarily on the scalp. And if you do decide to put it on the hair, you spray it in the hands first and you simply coat the strands. But you need to be putting something on their hair 
that of course you wash out thoroughly as you wash it in between the retightenings or so forth, but that you put something on their hair that's going to feed their hair, that's going to be nutritive, that is going to help with the um, health of the hair follicles that will be able to help rejuvenate those hair follicles and that will help extend the strength and the growth of the overall hair uh, community, the community of hair, your follicles, your scalp, and your strands, the community of hair. You want to be addressing that. You can't afford to not address that and then have them undergo the repeated retightenings over and over and over again. You will be disappointed as time goes on when you start to experience or the hair starts to react to some of the stress. Where are we? 15 minutes. I'm doing good, Tunisia. Number 10, choose your lactation carefully for this aspect of the journey. Do not be careless. Please choose someone that is tender-headed for your child's own benefit. Don't choose a heavy-handed sister who uh, doesn't respond to your child's cries or who says your child is tender-headed. Don't choose someone like that. Make sure that the person that's doing your child's hair takes their time. Add on or request an extra one or two hours and be willing to pay for it so that your child is not uncomfortable when getting the retightening or does not experience distress after the retightening. At the top of that list would really be you as the parent learn to do the retightenings yourself and see if you might be willing to invest in doing your child's own retightening at least for a period of time. Consider that. Number 11. Oh, that takes me on to number 11. Consider to retire yourself after the initial stages or years or even having them learn how to do it. Young people, that's one of the reason why you want to engage them in the maintenance. You don't want them to think it's a totally no free hairstyle. You want them to know that they don't have to really have anybody in their hair, you know, for every two months. But at the same time, you don't want to raise kids who are lazy and don't know how to do their own hair because then you actually put them at a disadvantage. I know a lot of mothers who, for whatever the reason, the, the girls, the children, female children, along with not learning how to cook and sew and do some other things, not that it's it's a life-threatening um, thing, but it's important. Learning how to care for your hair is a part of your hygiene, and people can tend to often believe that locks, regardless of what type they are, are a lazy hairstyle. They are not a lazy hairstyle. You do need to um, allow your child to participate and to, 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 to derive some sort of pride and pleasure in the upkeep of their hair. This is very, very important, all right? Um, but in having them to do that, sometimes when they get to a certain age, they want to learn how to do those retightenings. Say hi to Alfie. Hello, baby. Hello. Hi, mama. Okay. So next on the list is 12, and this is very important. Periodically gauge how they're feeling about their natural hair. This is important, y'all. So this is why you got to do these check-ins. This is why you got to constantly be affirming self, okay? You got to give them those affirmations. You got to be continue to do some of those things we talked about very early on because over time as they come into certain age brackets especially as adolescents they can begin to feel different about their hair especially as they begin to become more impacted by uh peer pressure or what the joneses are doing let's go come on come out of there come out of there let's go let's go let's go i'm working bye i'm working she understands working when i say i'm working y'all but do y'all know when i play that um dun 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 Da -da, da -da, that, that little, you see, she came back when she hears me play the intro. I don't care where she is in the house. She comes back because she's used to me dancing when I hear that. Hey, yo, Albie, but it's time to go. I am working. See, she heard me. She said that. Okay, okay, baby, I'm sorry, but I got to work. Let's go. Go ahead. <laughs> so um, make sure it's something that they want and not something that they feel is being imposed on them. This is our dream for them, but we can't live vicariously through our children. If your child gets to the point where they no longer want their locks and you haven't done your indoctrination, just jokes, you have to be willing to relent. You have to be willing to, you know, explore what some of those reasons are. See if you can't give them a little more time, help them to understand how important and permanent the decision is and that they may, in fact, regret it at a later date or see what's causing them uh, to feel disconnected, all right? That's very important, engaging how they feel. And last but not least, 13, uh, introduce them to the fun things that they can do with their hair, lock jewelry, spray on color, because I'm definitely 
saying that you, and I don't know why I didn't see that in my list because I thought I put it up here in my list. Oh, well, no, I don't see it in my list, but I'll mention it as a part of number 13. Oh, I do have, I do have 14. I have 14. It was about several lines down. I thought it was blank. Um, spray on color because you want to avoid hair dyes for as long as you possibly can. Kids like to experiment with spray on color, things like that. Things that will allow them to have the color without having the hair damage, rinses that give them a little extra pizzazz and creativity, certain types of barrettes that you feel are okay, certain types of bandanas, you know, of course you want to make sure they're not pulling those things too tight, certain types of braided styles, maybe they want to look like Pocahontas or Laura on Little House on the Prairie or who knows, to, you know, whatever it is you want to do, expose them to the ways that they can be creative that are still safe with their sister locks so that they don't feel inhibited. That's something that's very important. Also, yeah, because you want to, and styling tools, styling tools, which may be a barrette. Okay, you see this little barrette I have here? But this barrette is, all I did was pull two pieces of hair very gently and pin it. Okay, it's very loose. Okay, and I only have, do I have one? I have two. I have two. I have one right here. Um, whether it's that, whether it's a hairband, whether it's a, you know, um, a nice little, what I call a bandana, some lock jewelry. Maybe you want them to be able to explore putting beads on there. There's so many ways that they can be beautifully creative. They're young. The sky's the limit. Expose them to these different ways. Encourage them to be creative without doing things that may thin their locks, damage their locks, or harm their, their, their scalp or hair follicles. And last but not least, number 14, have a plan for swimming and other activities that require more hair attention. You know they're going to be swimming all every day during the summer. You got to come up with a plan for that. You got to find a way to deal with the chlorine without also putting drying chemicals on their hair day in and day out. You need to fortify their hair. Maybe you develop a routine where you decide you're going to put more oil on their hair before they go to swim to help insulate it from some of those things. Maybe you decide you're just going to rinse it and not thoroughly wash it. Maybe you decide that they're only going to swim two or three days a week. Maybe you decide to monitor the hair and the scalp every week. Maybe you are getting your retightenings a little more often during this time. Figure out what works for your children, but definitely show them how to care for their hair when they are swimming. I would say at a young age and early in the journey, they need to braid and band before swimming every single time. I would also say that if I was going to do any kind of braided hairstyle, that would be the time to do it. Because after that, you could simply rinse the hair out without even pulling down the updo or without even really having to go too much into um, pulling down the cornrows. If there was any time that I would let my child do that, it would be during the summer months where they are particularly active, especially if they are swimming. So I hope that this video was useful to you. Um, if it was, please like, share, subscribe. Let me know what you think. If you're interested in buying the I Am Melanin Magic Oil, which it assists with strengthening your hair, it has helped many women. If you check out the commercial and the website, many women to grow hair. And this is not the magical hair growth serum. Although some women are using this and that in tandem, but this is still very good for fortifying your hair, for helping to regrow hair in certain areas, for helping your hair to look and feel better. And it just does so many other things. You may text me at 678-438-6442. Or you may go to the website, www.immelaninmagic.com. That is also in the description. Please use the coupon lock channel. You can use that up through the end of September. Uh, if you uh, are there for the first time, there's a discount, which is 15%. However, the discount that I'm going to give you for the ladies that are coming from my channel, which is lock channel, L-O-C, C-H-A-N-N-E-L in all caps, that's going to be a better discount for you. It's a 20% discount. I love you guys. And for those of you who want to stick around for an Oracle card, let's pull one. Let's see what the message is that you are needing to hear at this particular time. 24 minutes, y'all. That is great because my video last time, was all going near 50 something minutes. It's ridiculous. All right. Let's see. 
see what we have here for my beautiful butterflies and my perfect people and my sexy sisters. What is the message for you, beautiful? Stay on course, girl. Stay on course. I'm going to pull a tarot card with this, too. And we have the strength card. What an amazing pair. Stand in your power. Stay on course. Whatever it is you're committed to, whatever it is you're standing up to right now, whatever boundaries you're protecting, wherever it is in your life that you're coming into union to align with your soul's truth or your divine life purpose or to take yourself to the next level, don't be distracted. You can subdue the lion, whether it is the one within that is the enemy or whether it is the one without. Okay, you can use your your charm. You can use your inner uh, strength and reservoir in order to get what you want. Stand your ground, stay focused, and know that you have everything that it takes to get wherever it is you're trying to go. Whatever the challenge is that you're dealing with in your life right now, don't be distracted. Stay strong. Don't let distractions come in. Don't let that uh, dream killers come in. Don't let anything come in that's going to distract you from your path and take you off course. The message is you are facing some big stuff in your life right now. This card is a request that you keep going and that you stay on course, however challenging this may feel. This is maybe for some of you guys going through something really tough right now, something that is really challenging you. You could have been coming through a dark night of the soul. Join my Butterfly Transformations YouTube channel, too, if you're on that spiritual journey. You could be coming through a, a, a dark night of the soul. You could be purging yourself of something. You could be letting something go. This is also related to health. The strength card is also related to our physical health. Maybe you're overcoming a disease or something that has attacked your temple. Whatever it is, make the necessary decisions that you need to make that will strengthen your health that will keep you strong in mind and spirit and keep moving forward because you're in the midst of a big test right now. Please be reassured that right now, this is the appropriate way forward. It's the only way forward is to stay strong, stand up straight and face it head on. You got this, baby. The universe supports your direction and slow and steady progress is assured. Okay? May not be able to change the energy of whatever you might be dealing with overnight, but you will eventually triumph. So keep the faith, stay on course, and know that the divine is sending reinforcements and that they're already there for you. I hope that this message resonates for you. I love y'all. I hope you have a beautiful evening. Bye. If you are not using I Am Melanin Magic Hair Oil, then what are you using? Hey guys, so I started using this oil called I Am Melanin Magic since February of this year and check out the new growth. Like, it's insane. Not only did it help with my new growth, but it smells amazing too. See the dramatic improvements Denisha has made after not having hair around her edges for three years. Tanya's hair had been like this for almost 20 years and while getting injections. Her doctor said it was scarred and would never grow back. After four weeks of using I Am Melanin Magic, this is what she looked like. I Am Melanin Magic did this to Danette's hair after a short time. Hi, I'm the creator of the I Am Melanin Magic hair and skin care brand. My vision has always been to develop a line of products that meets the unique needs of melanated people. The I Am Melanin Magic hair oil is our premier product. It is the leading high-end supplement for your mane. It reduces breakage, promotes growth, and can be used on all hair types and looks from straightened hair and micro locks to wigs and protective styles. It's antifungal, antibacterial, and anti-funk, so you know you're protected. It softens and conditions your hair, and it's anti-frizz too. This really is all you need. It's rich with antioxidants, loaded with growth promoting ingredients. Look at the growth of my hair. The proof is in the product. Need I say more? Don't delay, purchase yours today. I am Melanin Magic and so are you.